What is up, everyone? It is me with ADHD. Welcome back to the second episode of the podcast. Uh, today, I am with a really cool guy from England. His name is Scott Latty, but you guys might know him as Scott Creator or Respect ADHD on Twitter. He also does a lot of stuff on Facebook as well. Uh, but what I want to talk to him about today is a really amazing short film that he made based on ADHD. So say hello, everybody, to Scott. Hello. <laughs> How are you, buddy? Let me, t- uh, let me start this by asking you, like, when did you find out that you had ADHD? Um, I was diagnosed at the age of 33, um, and I'm now 42. Um, and it was literally when I was uh, working as a, a presenter for a, a company called New- um, like some Marketing uh, Services. There was a lot of things apparently that shouted out to them that I apparently was inappropriate behavior. Not as in, inappropriate, but like the bound person sure. boundaries, mm-hmm. uh, very forgetful, um, just a whole load of stuff. I, I just found it really difficult. Um, so, so I went mm-hmm. to my GP and said, no, I think I need to get referred or we need to be you know, seen to see if I've got, if there's, if this is what you know, this person thinks mm-hmm. is right. So, yeah, I don't know how long the process took because a lot of people's, I think it depends where you're from. Um, but I don't remember it being that long. And uh, then went to get an assessment, which was probably about an hour and a half ish. T- I don't know. It was, a, it was a long chat. And it was literally about my medical history, my schooling, my family, my mental health. Um, and I remember the last question they asked me was, was I ever disruptive at school? And I was in maths because I hated it. <laughs> I hate numbers. Fair enough. <laughs> I just could not process and I hate yeah. it. So, yeah. yeah. And then so I remember them saying that it's very likely that you have ADD, which obviously now, now today's terms, it's more ADHD inattentive. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. And it's from there, I had about four days of really low mood. And I was like, I was a bit angry at the system i was angry at feeling kind of like well why haven't you picked this up earlier um mm-hmm. yeah i was quite depressed after that for four days and just felt really crap and just frustrated and grr yeah, yeah. i feel yeah you know it, it's strange um that you say that you uh, were concerned about uh it like annoyed that it wasn't picked up earlier yeah. so i had this conversation with my dad and i was like oh, okay. like i was like because uh, I got diagnosed out here when I was um, 26, 20, 27, I think. And I was like, Dad, like, did you ever like not notice that I displayed symptoms of ADHD? And he was like, yeah, I mean, totally. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, like, why? What? And he was well, like, yeah. I was like, why didn't you do anything? And he's like, well, I mean, that's just who you are. Like that, you know, that's just that you were just Chris. And that's, you know, yeah. we loved you like that. So it's funny because... I feel like that's cult- British culture is like yeah. is like you know Don't that's fine you were fine you know we yeah, got exactly. by and you did it and and you had it but we were fine and that's like the mentality there whereas it's totally different here it's like the moment you show a shred of like mm-hmm. anything towards ADHD they're like quick get him in for a diagnosis yeah. get him medicated yeah. and get him you know and it's like totally different but yeah uh, I found that really interesting uh yeah. to be honest so you found it wasn't that long then the from you going to see your gp to actually being diagnosed and treated I think so i mean it was a while ago to be fair mm-hmm. <laughs> memory is shocking right. um it could have been maybe six months um it, it could have been longer i don't know um but I, I do remember kind of sitting down with the gp and having this list and um but I, I know it's frustrating for a lot of people. I think it depends, like I say, it depends on where you're from. The funding is absolutely shocking because where I'm treated, they only treat <clears throat> they only treat my my ADHD. They don't treat the anxiety. They don't treat any anything else that comes with that, which right. is down to funding. Um, okay. So, and I've I've asked them many times, but why don't you? What's the point of not you know treating mm-hmm. something that is underneath exactly. at the same time and help me? Right. Um, they always said, "Well, it's uh, you know, it is to do funding if, if we, you know, with the funding, the trusting, the trusts, and mm-hmm. you know, some money from there, they're going to have to. Someone else is going to have to suffer." I even said about, you know, I wish I could go 
uh, private. Um, yeah. But apparently, they don't always um, take a, a private diagnosis because with the NICE guidelines, as far as I understand, they have to follow quite a rigid structure. Mm -hmm. The private um, sector, they don't. So right. there are times when someone's coming um, to the clinic with a, a diagnosis and it's actually not been ADHD that they have. It's been something completely different. So it's uh, there's an the, incorrect diagnosis then. Yeah, basically. And it's right. like they're paying for something. So there's like the people going in, you know, I think I've got ADHD or can you, um, can you give me this diagnosis because mm -hmm. a financial benefit to me. And I've heard that happens with, kids like parents doing it because there is there's financial means um which it's yeah. crazy it's absolutely crazy it is crazy and like and it's almost like so living in america in a place where uh it is basically all private healthcare yeah um, it's different and it's not necessarily different for the better so i would I'm a sort of person I would definitely prefer to be for there to be a public health care out here because yeah. um there's a point of me where I think that the the nurses and the doctors care more about your diagnosis and who like yeah. what's actually going on than a private mm -hmm. doctor does because a private doctor cares about how much oh. money is involved in uh your diagnosis. Right. If they know that a diagnosis of um ADHD, depression, this, that, and the other is going to get me like five different medications and then, yeah. and it's going to fund their pockets, then they're going to do that. Whereas right. somebody who is in the public healthcare system is going to, they're not getting paid by the medication. So they're just going to get me what I need. So, right. but there's parts of me that, so that wish for that. But then there's also parts of me that remember that the government don't like programs like the NHS. So they mm -hmm. try to defund them. So then it, you know, it kind of, it, so you, cool. especially with mental health it, it's a struggle so you know absolutely mate. It's, it's counterproductive though i think it's, it's a, so annoying because if you don't invest yeah. into people in the right areas then of course they're going to struggle right um, but i think maybe there's you know maybe there's reasons behind that um again it's all about that isn't it and it's yeah. it's sad people i could spout off a lot of you know x y and z's and everyone will agree yeah. but I'm not the one in control. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, yeah. So I, I feel your pain on that, and that, I'm Thanks. sorry that sucks. I'm sure people who, as a majority of my viewers, are probably American. I'm sure yeah. they would be interested to know the. Uh, I know it was a long time ago for you, but like the steps <laughs> through from. I'm all gray hairs like, now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the steps through from uh, di right right for your diagnosis. Yeah, so when the diagnosis happened, um, I went in to get um, for the first medication appointment. Um, I think I was on, I was on methylphenidate, which is I was on. I think it was Concerta. Um, All right, because because there's no Adderall in England, right? No, they won't let no. us have it, and I don't know why. No. I don't know if it's because it can be um, if it's too much or if it's um, can be abused. Um, probably probably no. that. I mean, it's, it's something that's abused here, quite commonly here. I think Pardon? it's produced over here in England, um, yeah. as far as I understand. Some a company called Shire, I think. Um, I don't know if that's a fact, but I did look into it. Um, but yeah, so the first time um, I, I remember actually the first time I took medication, um, and I've always had a kind of a quite a tempestuous. That's a big word to use, actually. <laughs> <laughs> quite a kind of <laughs> right. <laughs> when do I use big words? Um, <laughs> God, ADHD in action right now, jumping on. Right. Um, yeah, I took the tablet, and then within about, because it was an instant release one, I think. Okay. Um, I can't remember to be honest with you, but I do remember that everything just my, my, the anger I had, the frustration uh -huh. that I had, um, just the white noise and that uh -huh. oh, I can't think yep. went. Yeah. Completely and utterly went, and I was like, wow. You know, this is who I'm meant to be. And yeah. I actually got in, I think I remember, so the first person I told when I was diagnosed was my mum. <laughs> keeping in mind what I just said there. Right. Um, and the first person I text was my mum. Because I was oh. basically trying to say, look, it's not my fault the way I've been. Um, mm -hmm. You know, X, Y's and Z's. And it was like, I said, look, can we put everything in the past, draw a line in the sand, 
and can we move on from that? Okay. Um, which we kind of did, but we've since had lots of <laughs> ups and downs. But I think sure. she's got bipolar, and I think she's also got um, um, undiagnosed uh, ADHD. Uh, okay. As my dad has, but they're the kind of the age where the people kind of they say, "Well, I've lived with it this long, I'm just going to carry on," which okay. I disagree with it because in the end they doesn't matter how old you are if you're struggling then why would you not want to help right. yourself um mm-hmm. that's my attitude towards everything that if yeah. i can help myself then i will so, that is a, such an older attitude so like i um a lot of people say the same thing to me so when i first got like uh made the channel and i first started posting a lot of people would post me and say well uh i don't know look at you now like you made it this far uh, throughout your life, you made it through university and college, and um, you you know you're now living in yeah. America with your house and your and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, yeah, but it doesn't mean it wasn't an absolute struggle from yeah, exactly. beginning to now. It was it yeah. was horrible, and like I, I the worst part of it was I went through my life thinking that's just who I am. Some of it was like really annoying. So like mm-hmm. being the constant person in your friend group who is like almost like the idiot because you are the one that's always dead forgetful and yeah, like yeah. you know yeah. and just I'm like late for everything and it's like yeah. oh well that's just chris and it's like no like that's not how i plan my life i plan to be on time and i plan yeah. to remember th- i don't you know mm-hmm. it's just so like you're constantly getting beaten down by these things uh all the time because there are mm-hmm. symptoms that you don't know are symptoms and that it was the same for me the first day i took my medication it was like this cloud was just lifted and like <clears throat> before that i would like have a conversation with somebody but like at the same time i would be on my phone and i would also be listening to a other conversation at the same time and i would be doing something else at the same time like all these different things just so i could focus on the one conversation that i'm supposed to be focusing on because my my focus was so displaced i couldn't i needed other it's strange like with adhd you need another thing completely to to help you focus on something else one thing at a time i I cannot Um, it's so hard and like it's it's annoying so this is yeah. the thing I don't understand. Like, so why do people have such a stigma against it? So, for example, if you're a diabetic, what are you going to give yourself? You're going to give yourself insulin. insulin. If you yeah. had a heart problem, you're going to take a, a tablet that's going to help you with that. Why would anyone not? And if I respect anyone that doesn't take medication, and that's fine if they have that alternative way. That's mm-hmm. brilliant. But s- some people seem to, at this, this, there's a stigma against um, giving your brain the dopamine that it needs. We don't have it. As simple right. as that. If we don't yeah, have, and, yeah, why should it's we not, not? It's not. A, it's not. It's not like giving it. Another comment I've had is it's like it's giving you a leg up, and that's because, and that's mainly because they know people who have taken yeah, exactly. stuff like Adderall who exactly. don't have ADHD, and they know that like, yeah, it makes them like focus like ten times more or whatever, yeah. and it makes them like, which it's not healthy for you. Yeah. Uh, like nobody should be taking it when they don't have ADHD because it does a totally different thing to your brain than mm-hmm. what it does when you have ADHD. Oh. It regulates you. If anything, one of the biggest differences I've noticed is in people who don't have ADHD and they take it, they are like, they go into this like hyperactive state where they just like need to be doing things and, you know, really? and they can't calm down and their heart rate's going and they're, wow. yeah. Whereas people who have this disorder, it does, personally for me, it does the exact opposite. It mm-hmm. slows me down. Yeah. It slows my brain down yeah. and it stops because my brain runs mm. at what theirs does on Adderall. My mm. brain runs like that all the time when I'm not yeah. medicated and I can't pick these things and focus on one thing because there's too many things going on at once. So exactly. it you know uh That's but true, it? yeah it's it's wild. I, I forget what I was even talking about in the first <laughs> place. <laughs> Do you know how uh, many standard. we've been talking? Multiple. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh but but uh yeah like it's uh, but that, oh yes, we were talking about your your um, diagnosis, right? So then you have a different medication uh, to Adderall because they don't have that in England. Uh, yeah. Concerta, right, was the one you said. I, I was, yeah. I started on Concerta, um, and then slowly built myself up to whatever the medication was. 
Um, and at the time, I was in a different job because okay. I have friends from job to job as well. Um, but I've mainly worked in call centers. So there were times when I would take it in the morning, but mm-hmm. it would it would only last me. It's supposed to last for four hours. Okay. It only lasted me for three hours, so my, maybe my body was metabolizing it too fast. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. And that then is inst- that's, that's is that is instant release then. Oh, it's four crazy. Hours. Um, so I ended up taking more just to help me get through to the day. Okay. Which I know it, I didn't realize it, but um, it was became quite a dangerous thing. Yes. Um, and I started getting help. Uh, heart palpitation, heart palpitation, yeah. Um, just everything, and they literally told me like, stop. I nearly thought I was going to have a heart attack. Um, it was that bad. So they stopped me. Um, I think I think I went onto a different tablet. Okay. Um, I think I went onto Stratera, which is um, atomoxetine, which Stratera. is a non-stimulant tablet. Um, has it very to help with heart? It's to help with your heart too, right? No, Stratera. that one. It was originally used to be help for depression, but they stopped using oh, it. It didn't really help. But it numbed okay. me out. It was hard. That was a oh. really hard one to go on to because it didn't give me the kick that I needed. Mm-hmm. But then when it did kick in, yeah, it was okay. But it's um, it certainly gave my appetite back. So, okay. <laughs> just crazy. Right. Um, but after a certain amount of time, I forget how long. I was on it for about a year. Um, and then it just made me into this irritable moody git <laughs> if i'm honest yeah i was not i wasn't very nice to be had like let's say the motivation happen no creativity no nothing right. and i just thought you know, this is not me um so i was basically wanting to get back under a stimulant um right. and i was given the choice to go back on to methyl okay um but because of the, but then they didn't tell me about anything else so i started asking around like you know what does this do and what does that do mm-hmm. then Medication it changes with everybody. You know, everyone right. has a different brain chemistry. So, it's true. Um, and then someone that uh, I uh, I was having conversations with told me about Alvance, which is um, or Yvance, you guys call it over there. Yes, um, which is an amphetamine. So mm. it works in a very different way. Right. Which I've now been on. So I don't know time frames. I have no idea. <laughs> But it's really good. I was on good, a Liz Dexamphetamine, right. 50 milligrams. Mm-hmm. Um, I was on a um, Dexamphetamine, which is the instant one, um, right. 15 milligrams. But um, I've, I've moved from where I was living to, mm-hmm. a, different, to a different area as well. Okay. Um, so t- for me to get back on my beta blockers, because my pulse rate is too high, um, I would have to go back to the doctors, which I keep meaning to make an appointment for. <laughs> and because it's a new area, I'm a right. bit like, oh God, no, I don't want to do sure. it. But I'm, I'm kind of getting there. I'm kind of feeling a bit more, um, it's the word stable. I don't know if that's the right word to use, but a bit more balanced. Um, I self-medicate, which is, you know, <laughs> you can't yeah. see what's behind me, but <laughs> <laughs> have a beer. Um, oh, that's but fine. yeah, so I'm okay. It's just the emotional regulation that I'm struggling with at times. Yeah, which is an arsh if I'm allowed to say I, that. Yeah, I no, I agree. I've I've struggled with uh, emotional regulation a lot as well. Uh, it's it's a big. It's just a. It's like I I take my medication and it works with like I would say it works with seventy five percent of my symptoms for ADHD. Yeah. But there's just some things that it can't help, and one of them exactly. is my emotional regulation. You know, it's the most annoying thing. It's not all been bad though, right? Because uh, you were uh, okay. you just exactly. made that movie that uh, that I wanted to talk yeah. about. So um, that well, movie is uh, at dawn he died, right? Um, and yeah. that is a short film that you created uh, yeah. and worked with a film company to bring to life, which is amazing, by the way. I watched it. I thought it was like so it. good. I'm gonna put it in my uh, YouTube description oh, for thanks. people to watch. Please watch it, people, because. It is fantastic. It's a great representation of what it is to have ADHD. I felt uh, quite emotional watching it, and uh, I think that Aww. you guys will too, especially my followers. You will. Um, but just tell me about that. Tell me about like how you even decided on making. Like, where did this all materialize from? Um. Oh God, how long have we got? Um, if I stay on track, <laughs> it'd be amazing. Um, I was literally <laughs> sat on a sofa once and I'm an ideas person. Um, okay. come up with ideas all the time. 
I had this visualization of myself uh, or this little boy um, sat on the sofa in this bubble and everybody else was around him. But he was trying to communicate with these people, his family, but he was struggling. Um, and I started, I started literally for the next hour and a half, I literally sat on the floor writing what I saw, like these profiles of people um, who most of all were my family. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. um, they say, write what you know. And right. that's exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the time I knew someone who was a script writer or writer. And I said, look, this is really what I want to do. You know, with my ADHD, I want to prove to people that it's not what they think it is. It's not this, I'm not a, a naughty kid or, you know, I, I do this on purpose. I'm literally wanting to show people what it is like to have or to live with this thing that's in my brain and I can't always control myself or mm -hmm. manage it. Um, so it's gone through quite a few processes. Um, it was going to be called um, It's Not My Fault, um, but at the time I had a, a prison scene in it, um, which then I thought, oh, God, I can't do that because bad connotations and it's not my fault just because you've got ADHD. No. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there was, there was a few titles and actually I was on the bus and I'm sure you do this and you're in on the toilet you're in the shower wherever it is might be it might be random mm -hmm. places and you come up with this woo, idea yep. um, and I was yeah I was on the bus to to work and mm -hmm. I was trying to think of something that was a better word rather than just you know three words or four words a bit of a tongue twister right. and the word came to my head was misunderstood and I was like ah <laughs> and that has stuck with me ever since because everyone who talks about ADHD always says it's a very misunderstood condition. And it is. Um, yeah. So um, there were, it's been a, I don't know even how long, when I started it. Um, I, I had a, I started casting, I started looking at locations. Um, I had a director on board from London. Um, we did even a read through which was <laughs> crap. <laughs> it was absolutely, the, the main character couldn't make it. Um, oh. So I did it. Okay. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> Even my own script, I was, I've never done it before. And I just literally. Hope well, you're the script I'd writer, not the actor. So Exactly. And, but even the people that were there, they couldn't, it didn't seem like anybody was really bothered about it. Like no, okay. one, they had the script already and they hadn't really bothered to learn lines. Oh, okay. So, I kind of was a bit disheartened. Um, and then um, I cast this guy called uh, Velton Lish, who's, I didn't realize he was a filmmaker himself. Um, he always said to me, if you need some help, I'll help you out. Oh, that's uh, nice. I'm stubborn as hell. <laughs> I wanted to prove to the world that I didn't need any help. I'm going to do this by myself. Right. Um, and then it kind of fell flat in his face. Um, and then I thought, do you know what? Okay, I need his help. So it need, the script needed beefing up. Um, and then, cut long story short, we kind of unfortunately banged heads, um, fell out a little bit, which is fine. It happens quite often. Right. Um, and then I just, that, he carried on doing another version of the script. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've just carried on with, um, literally, I, I reached out to um, Roundhouse Pictures on Twitter. Mm -hmm. and they were asking for short uh, film scripts. Well, I didn't know what short film script looked like or how long that was, but right. too long at the time. They uh, they basically said, well, look, we like it, but it mm -hmm. needs to down. And they said, well, can you write it? And I said, well, look, I, I don't know what the hell that. I don't know. I can't. I can write stuff, but I'm not. I'm not a script writer. Right. Um, so I had continuous meetings with a guy called Tal, who's mm -hmm. from Lithuania, an amazing guy. Um, it's a lot, it's, this is a short story, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, they they got this guy called Elliot uh, Barrington involved, who's the main character. Um, okay. Very good. He, he wasn't how I would have casted him. I was looking for a more of a dark hair, slightly unkept person, okay. that fifty shades of grey kind of person who's like look good looking ish. Uh huh. But, um, you know, he just looked a bit dishevelled and beaten down. Um, so when I saw him, I was like, oh, okay. So I kind of went with it, um, yeah. and then we had a production meeting, and I was, you know, it was all that the the noise was crazy, and I was trying to explain what the story is about, you know, this character, mm. um, 
And I think that's where they got the ideas of bumping from one thing to another uh, okay. and always interaction because, you know, sensory issues and we sure. can't do that. Um, the, and then we literally, they filmed it in one day and watching this whole thing. I've never been part of a process like that, but it was fun. Loads mm -hmm. of fun. Like there was this yeah, the a lot a of fun, roll, huh? the B roll, um, uh -huh. sound, um, different angles, the lighting. Uh -huh. It was really exciting. Um, yeah. And then it got to late latter part of the day. Mm -hmm. And that's where you start seeing him walking through Newcastle and uh, it gets more intense. I was shattered. <laughs> I was absolutely yeah. shattered. <laughs> uh, I was ready to go home. Um, but the, yeah, the turnaround of that was really fast. Um, I think they did it in about two weeks, which is wow. incredible. They, from, they edited it in, in two weeks? Yeah, it was wow. really impressive. That's impressive. So we, I got to go in and watch it. With, they were going to go with the rest of the peeps, but they weren't That's ready. Yeah. Um, it was on a, just a, it wasn't any sort of decent camera uh, on TV. But it was just a, you know, mm -hmm. a big sort of big TV type thing. Mm -hmm. But I remember watching it and I had, I had a coffee in my hand. And I was just about to take it. I was like, <laughs> I did not blink. It was I was captivated, and it's one of those Excellent. things like you know when you you've done something and you're like, yeah. wow, I got really excited. I was like, wow, what's going to happen? That's and then so there's stuff about PR companies and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, the PR was okay. It, it it got taken by two two papers. I organised the the radio interview with the BBC Newcastle. Uh -huh. um, which I thought they would have done. <laughs> sure. But I'm, I'm very much into PR and self-promotion right. and stuff. Um, cause and it's, it's your people. baby, really. <laughs> exactly. I had a reason yeah. for doing it. Right. Um, and that interview was really good, I must admit. Great. Um, the, uh, James Craig, who is head of film at, at Roundhouse, mm -hmm. he, he apparently didn't like how he said because he sounded quite stiff. Um, <laughs> I know he won't watch this. <laughs> we might do. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> but he knows that anyway he knows that but I, I think I came across alright they edited it quite well um, okay, yes. and that's it really and it's, it, it went to sent, sent to 10 film festivals costing them £100 Woo. no Cannes Film Festival this year <laughs> <laughs> not yet it's not coming. yet no. that's my next one <laughs> um, but yeah so it got it, it's been seen by a few people I don't know how many people have watched it but um I've had some good feedback, to be honest with you. I've had yeah, some interesting I, feedback. Good. I thought it was great. I thought that it really portrayed what it feels like to have ADHD. I mean, you know, a lot of it, um, you feel kind of, I, I don't want to give away the movie, of course, but, you know, there's uh, parts of it where you're kind of in this other world almost, yeah. if, and it feels like, you know, uh, like a totally different movie. And then when you, there's like a realization moments in it where yeah. you think, Oh yeah, that's that's happening, and yeah. those were really great for me. I that's that's what really hit oh, home cool. for me, and because um, I've been in those, I've been in those places where oh. you can be like I can sometimes I can run on autopilot, right? And I can be like in a conversation with somebody, and I don't really even know what I'm replying or what I'm saying because at that yeah. time I'm totally in a different place. Oh, thinking bro. about something totally different, doing something oh. totally different. And, you know, so I, I, that yeah. really, like, I related to that a lot. So I thought you guys did a really great job of it. And I thought your yeah. script was, like, that, the script just was how it bad. needed to be. There was a few things that I wasn't too sure about. But, um, that was, like, the medication part of it. But right. um, no one's really picked up on that, which is good. I, I have to say, I'm really appreciative of what they did. Yeah. Uh, okay, you so just wanted to go further now. I get you. I, I get you. Yeah. I'm just Good for you, and and I think it deserves that. After watching it, I think it deserves to go to further places and to a bigger reach. And you know, if all of my uh, subscribers can watch, you know, will watch it, and hopefully they will share it. Share it if you if you watch it and you love it, guys. Share it because it deserves more exposure than it has had. Uh, not that it hasn't had a lot already, but it deserves more. And uh, you know, let's just keep that going. So I followed you on Twitter for a while. You're such a big advocate for like mental health and ADHD as a whole. How do you find doing that? Um, do you know, it started off as just a, a, an idea of thought, do you know, I'll just post a video. Mm -hmm. And so many people said to me, Scott, you're so brave for doing it. But I don't see it that way at all. Right. 
Um, I wear my heart on my sleeve and I think, Do <laughs> if I can help one person doing it, then mm-hmm. it's, to be totally honest, it's a bit of a, <clears throat> to the people that say, <laughs> one, that ADHD is not real, right. uh, to my own family, to the people that discredit me. And I just started to do this kind of like, okay, so what does it look like to have what's in my brain? Because uh-huh. you can talk about it, you can um, read up about it. Right. What about you seeing it? You don't see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the one thing that I thought, well, do you know what? If I can be um, someone that shares a part of my life and shows right. how it affects me by being upfront and talking about it, mm-hmm. then great. And it just literally started to snowball. It's great if I've, you know, the more people that follow, the more right. people that can hear and watch. Yeah. Um, right. Yes, it's nice for me that, you know, that's great. Um, but it's, it is literally about getting, the, challenging the perception. And that used to be a, um, a slogan I came up with was um, changing the face of ADHD. Okay. Because everyone thinks that you're naughty, you're this and that and the other. And it right. just proves that, you know, there are a lot of people, unfortunately, that still believe that it doesn't exist, even medical people. Yeah. That. It's disappointing, isn't it? Yeah, and it's like, do you know what? I, I'm I'm one of those people that I like to prove people wrong. Right. As simple as that. And it comes mm-hmm. across like I'm a bit of an argumentative little type sometimes. <laughs> I've had to learn to, uh, to hold my mouth. Anyone who's got ADHD, how much harder do we have to try to fit in a society in a world yeah. that is not designed for us? Yeah. And then again, how many people are using devices? How many people are using things that was designed or invented by someone who as that has got a different brain. Right. Um, so I'm really proud of that fact. So I stick to who yeah. I am because um, I'm stubborn. <laughs> that's good. I mean, that's great. And every, uh, you're very candid about your situation and about ADHD in general. And that's something that uh, I also try to do on my channel is, you know, yeah. amongst the stuff that I do, I know I do a lot of, I do a lot of these kind of best ways to deal with this and best ways to do that yeah. and top this and that. And, yeah. you know, while I like to do those videos, it's not the goal of my channel. And um, the goal of my channel is to be, the, first of all, I started it for the same reason you did. If I could help one person feel yeah. A little bit better about ADHD, then yeah. that I'll, I'll have completed my goal. And the, I also had the goal of I went to find help on yeah. how to be how to handle ADHD and how to like talk about medication mm-hmm. and talk about how it really affects you. Like yeah. not just a doctor telling me how it's going to feel, but a real yeah. person. That yeah. was what I went to find when I started it. Yeah. And when I found out ADHD, and there was nothing. And so that's where I kind of. I decided that I wanted to do the same thing. And the goal of my channel is to be more open and just honest and be like a conversational channel that where, you know, it's the the videos like my videos on being overwhelmed and stuff like that, that really are the ones that I'm passionate about. And um, so I props to you because I think that you're doing a lot for the Twitter community, which is a community that I can't reach because I, first of all, doing YouTube videos takes up way too much of my attention that I cannot, <laughs> I, I just cannot bring myself to be able to post on uh-huh. YouTube and also post on Twitter and also post on Instagram and also do Facebook. I have all of them for my channel, but I just don't have the attention and the, like, I, I'm not put together Maybe well enough to do them all. And be your social media consultant. How's that? <laughs> Right, I know, right? <laughs> Masking myself here. Right. <laughs> so that, the reason why I got involved with um, the soon to be charity, often misunderstood, because right. that in itself is run by a guy called Sam Crawford, who has and that's, a. That's soon to be? Yeah, it's, it's, you have to pay to be a charity, apparently, which I have no idea why. Um, right. But it's a free service, basically, where it's for people that have got ADHD, um, addiction or right. mental health, which is majority of most people, to be fair. So addiction could be uh, your typical, you know, it's the drugs, the alcohol, the gambling, or whatever it might be, sex addiction even. Mm-hmm. Who's not, <laughs> uh-huh. not saying a word here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they get a chance to go into um, a music studio to learn um, a guitar, or learn a, uh, an instrument to okay. be a producer, to be a DJ, multiple things, and they can produce their own piece. Um, so it's using that as creative juices um, but it's also to help people come out of their 
their shell and start developing sure. themselves, um, self-esteem, right. um, you know, and there's, there's a lot of things that aren't quite right. You know, the funding for, you know, for you know, youth clubs, they've mm-hmm. gone. Where do our kids go these days? They go get themselves into trouble. Where's the stimulation? We don't right. have any. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think it's up to people that have got ADHD. We're the best entrepreneurs. We're the best people that motivate each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to be fair, I think it's going to be amazing. Once we've got that in one place, we're going to then replicate it in another, um, like, for example, Newcastle, which is where I am. Right. Even though accent doesn't remember, doesn't, doesn't remember that. Uh, no. Um, and then, you know, keep going and keep going. So, okay. And um, what's the name of that charity? Well, soon to be charity? Often misunderstood. Often misunderstood. That's another one then that I'm going to put in the uh, description and uh, okay. get the, get the get you know, get people talking it. about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, awesome. I mean, yeah. Thank you for coming on and thank you for talking to us about all that stuff because. Uh, I think it's really important. I think you do like a lot and uh, your following is really growing. So at least we can say that we had you on here before you were big and famous. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, you know, and and keep doing what you're doing, man. I love it. I'm always going to be following you. And yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for asking me to do this because I I love doing this. I haven't done it for a long time. And um, your channel itself is growing continuously. So um Everyone should be helping each other as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, we're, agreed. We're a great community, and I hope that your followers, uh, your listeners, enjoy what we're doing. So, me keep too. Working. Yeah. All cool. right. All right, man. Well, take care. All right. Take care. See you later, guys. All right.